Hey YouTube, thanks for visiting. This is again a lecture of calculus of variation and in this lecture we are going to discuss the variational problem with moving boundaries. Moving boundaries, okay. And in the previous two lectures of calculus of variation, we introduced Euler-Lagrange equations the first lecture and in the second lecture we uh, discuss the isoperimetric problem okay iso perimetric problem okay so those who are uh, interested to watching these two lectures of calculus of variation you can watch the previous two lectures i will be provide uh, i will pr provide the link of these two lectures in the description okay and uh, i think uh, it will be very helpful for you if i make a separate playlist okay so that's uh, i'm trying to make a separate playlist for calculus of variation this is uh, very helpful so let us discuss the variational problem with moving boundaries okay so in the previous lectures of calculus of variations we discussed the isoperimetric problem and the basic uh, calculus of variation problem in that uh, problems the boundaries point or the boundary point are fixed in the case of functional or in the case of the functions okay but in this case or in this lecture we are going to discuss such a functions uh, and we are finding the extrema value of the functional in case of uh, the uh, boundary of the curve maybe uh, one point is either one point or both end or either one end or both end of the curve are uh, maybe moving okay so let's start and before starting i am requesting you to all those who are new in my channel please like the session comment if you have any doubt in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe the channel okay so yeah this one is the lecture variational problem with moving boundaries okay so it says that consider the functional i equal to integration x1 to x2 x f of x y y dash dx uh, here that is in this chapter where we consider the case when uh, one or uh, both of the boundary points can move okay for example to find the shortest distance between the circle and the straight line the equations of the circle and the straight line may be put in the explicit form of y equal to phi x therefore to find the curve between a point uh, y equal to x1 y1 and on the circle of the another point x2 y2 on the straight line uh, for who is the functional is minimum that is suppose this is a circle and this is a straight line okay so suppose uh, there is a point <coughs> x1 y1 on the circle and there is a point x2 y2 on the straight line now we have to find the minimum distance of these two point which lies in the uh, in the two separate curve okay and we have to find the shortest distance between the two curve okay to find the uh, extrema value of the functional okay such type of problems are known as the variational problem with moving or free boundaries okay so see here these two points x1 y1 and x2 y2 can freely move uh, to in the boundary of the circle and uh, this is freely move in the uh, sorry freely move on the straight line okay so we have to find uh, the distance where uh, they gives the minimum value okay so we uh, here, here we shall find a curve between fixed point x1 y1 and other point x2 y2 on the boundary of the curve y equal to phi x for which the functional i equal to this one is extremum okay so this is the work in the chapter we have to do okay now the main important thing is transversity conditions okay let us assume that one or uh, of the boundary points a x1 y1 suppose this is a x1 y1 and the <coughs> is fixed so suppose dekho yahan pe kiye hum logo ko matlab calculus ki calculations jab easy ho jaye isliye hum log yahan pe matlab assume kar rahe ki a fixed hai and the other point b can move and pass through the neighboring point c x2 plus delta x2 and y2 plus delta y2 on the curve y equal to phi x and this is the curve y equal to phi x and this is the point c okay now and b this is the point b x2 y2 and this is the point c x uh, x2 plus delta x2 and y2 plus delta y2 then the conditions becomes a plus phi dash minus y dash into a pop y dash uh, that is a p uh, a pop y dash means this is del f del y dash okay 
and at the point x equal to x to this is equal to 0 okay so in case this point fixed okay the this uh, condition hold at the point x equal to x to which is the variable point okay uh, which is the required condition for free boundaries this is known as the transversity condition okay and here one more case is extended form of this transversity condition which is the normal boundary condition okay normal boundary condition and this subtopic we discussed in the previous lecture another separate lecture okay for the normal boundary condition in that lecture we will cover the normal boundary condition and the corresponding example okay so uh, now it says that if the boundary of the point x1 y1 moves along the curve y equal to phi x and another point x2 y2 moves along the curve y equal to psi x see here it says that one boundary point is fixed and another is moving okay and in that case the conditions become this one but in case when the two uh, boundary point moves uh, separately along two different curves y equal to phi x and another point moves along the curve y equal to psi x then the conditions become this one a plus uh, phi dash minus y dash del f del y dash at x equal to x1 equal to 0 and a plus uh, psi dash minus y dash uh, del f del y dash at x equal to x2 equal to 0. So remember these formulas these are the very important formulas to find the shortest distance uh, between any two curves uh, in terms of functional okay this gives the required extremal of the function and one more important thing is that in case of shortest di distance distance this is distance shortest distance we take the functional i equal to integration x1 to x2 root under 1 plus y dash s square okay sometimes you will provide the extremal in the questions but sometimes you will simply say to find the shortest distance between two curve okay and in that case we use the functional this one integration x1 to x2 root under 1 plus y dash square dx okay so remind this one this is very important now uh, one more important thing is that orthogonality condition here it also comes consider the case when the functional is of the form i equal to this one gxy into uh, 1 plus y dash square dx where gxy does not vanish at the movable boundary point x2 we get this one uh, from the uh, from this condition okay from this condition we get f means this one and this is the value of f that is f is equal to g of xy into root under 1 plus y dash square we simply put this value to the condition here and we get simply gxy take gxy common and this is the gxy okay the x y common 1 plus pi dash y dash <coughs> at x to this equal to 0 okay this is very simple calculation okay and uh, since g x y not equal to 0 therefore we get simply this one this terms is equal to 0 that is 1 plus pi dash y dash this is equal to 0 and this gives uh, phi dash y dash this is equal to minus 1 this gives the orthogonality condition in case of moving moving boundary problem okay so this is the orthogonality condition the, you can remind this thing also okay now let us take an example this is very renowned example and this is also comes in csr net uh, one year questions previous year questions so find the shortest distance between the parabola y equal to x square and the straight line x minus y equal to 5 now here uh, one questions you may uh, ask me that sir uh, why we apply or uh, how or uh, when uh, we apply the moving boundary problem now simply uh, when you have to find the shortest distance between any two curve in that case we apply the uh, moving boundary value problem and you uh, you should remind that when you have to calculate the shortest distance between any two curves then you have to apply the moving boundary value problem of calculus of variation okay so just a second now first we write the transversity conditions so here two curves are given and two curves there are two curves and uh, there does not given uh, any fixed point okay so that means we have to take two points x1 y1 and x2 y2 in the case two car uh, two points are uh, movable okay these two both these two points are movable suppose x1 y1 uh, lie on that and x2 y2 lie on that or you can 
take it conversely okay so the transversely conditions given uh, is a plus phi dash minus y dash del f del y dash uh, equal to 0 at x equal to x1 and phi dash means if i i, I think i will take it here so phi dash means here i take x square and psi dash means here i take sorry phi means here i take x square and psi means here I take what uh, x minus 5 okay so y equal to phi and y equal to psi these two curve we take in here okay and a plus psi dash minus y dash del f del y dash at x equal to x2 equal to 0 this is 2 so where the extremal is of the form so here uh, no extremal is given therefore we have to take the extremal in the form of integration x1 to x2 1 plus y dash square dx okay with the condition that left end of the extremal moves along the curve y equal to x one x square and right end of the extremal moves along the curve x minus y equal to phi okay now one gives we simply put the values okay what is the values uh, f means 1 plus y dash square here f is equal to root under 1 plus y dash square <laughs> phi equal to x square this gives phi dash equal to 2x and psi dash equal to simply one okay we put these uh, two values in the uh, transversality conditions okay now uh euler lagrange equations gives del f del y minus ddx of del f del y dash is equal to zero where f is equal to one plus y dash square now here it should you should note that this a is what one plus y dash square okay which is free from x and y both okay so in that case the um, uh, what is the lagrange euler lagrange equations becomes del 2 y del x 2 this is equal to 0 and the extremal you can directly write y equal to a x plus this form x plus b okay so this is the form when the case uh, that the uh, functional f is free from both x and y okay so since i write here f is independent of x and y we can uh, write the extremal as y equal to c1 x plus c2 okay now substituting this in 3 and 4 we get 3 means this one I take here this is 3 and this is 4 okay so this gives 1 plus c1 square this one and this gives a condition 1 plus 2x1 c1 this is equal to 0 okay now put it in the uh, 3 this is uh, we put this in 3 and now we put this in 4 4 means the second one okay so the transversality condition of second one so this gives uh, c1 equal to minus 1 by putting simply putting here no terms of x uh, is given therefore this is uh, simply meaningless here since there is no terms of x1 or x okay so this gives 1 plus 2 x1 c1 equal to uh, c1 is equal to minus 1 now putting the value of c1 equal to minus 1 to this condition we get here x1 equal to 1 by 2 okay now uh, here it should uh, noted that both ends uh, of the extremal that is both ends lies on the extremal y equal to c1 x plus c2 okay so we get the extremal in form of this therefore the both ends that is the two points x1 y1 and x2 y2 lie on this uh what x2 y2 end point that is if we put x1 y1 to the uh, first curve that is y equal to uh, phi x is equal to uh, x square and the second curve is phi x equal to x minus 5 we put then these two gives equal okay therefore we equate c1 x1 is equal to x1 square and this is the second curve uh, this is phi phi at x1 okay this is phi at x1 this is equal to license lies therefore we can write these two and this is uh, i think uh, psi okay so phi x and psi x at x1 and x2 equate okay so by putting c1 equal to minus 1 and x2 equal to half of the above two equations that is in these two equations we get what uh, c2 equal to 3 by 4 and x2 equal to 23 by 8 therefore we get all the values of c1 c2 x1 and x2 okay we get these four values now we simply put these values in the uh, y in the form of y therefore we get the extremal is equal to y equal to minus x plus 3 by 4 and now we have to find the shortest distance we just put the values of x1 x2 and y in this given integral okay and y does equal to minus 1 here therefore if we put y does equal to minus 1 to this integral and simply integrate from 1 by 2 to 3, uh, 23 by 8 which is the uh, point x1 and x2 we get the required shortest distance which is equal to 19 root 2 by 8 okay so this is the working procedure you have to do in case of moving boundary value problem okay or uh, if you see the problem 
like this okay find the shortest distance between uh, any two car therefore you have to uh, uh, process this uh, procedure the working procedure is this one okay so this is you can uh, remind as a uh, problem solving form okay all the problems in this type can be solvable in the form of this one okay so first what we do first we find the transversality conditions and then and take the uh, functional okay take the functional whether it is given in the questions or not we have to take the uh, functional in the form of this one and uh, then put uh, take the phi x and the psi x uh, from the given curve you have to provide the curves in the questions so we have to take one is phi x and another one is psi x and then calculate the two transversal condition by putting the values of phi and psi okay and then you have to find uh, the or you have to calculate the euler lagrange equation in the case of the uh, by taking the uh, capital a that is the functional you have to calculate euler lagrange equation and find the extremal by using the euler lagrange equation and then uh, what you have to do you have to do uh, you, you have to put this uh, extremal in the transversality condition okay and then uh, by putting the value of extremal in the two transversality condition you have to calculate all the unknown quantities that is the constant of integrations and the x1 terms and x2 term to calculate the shortest distance okay so this is the working procedure complete working procedure uh, this example you uh, can uh, practice once uh, must okay to uh, solve the problems okay so i think this is understandable this class is very small class and very easy class by taking uh, just one transversality conditions okay so that is this class is based on transversality conditions okay and in the next class we will cover the natural boundary conditions okay so i will cover these conditions one by one by taking one or small classes for each okay that's why the, i think this is very helpful for you because if we uh, discuss one or two conditions or three conditions in one lecture then it is very haphazard okay so that's why i take the conditions one by one uh, by uh, one by one lectures okay so thank you for watching if the uh, lecture is helpful then please give a like to this video share with your friends and subscribe to the channel thank you friends see you again in the next video thank you